Pro Ultra Omega 3 and Belfort Property Restoration, restoring more than property. For more information, visit BELFOR.com. Reads alone. The snap, the slant, Joe Green, touchdown! Touchdown, Rutgers, they take the lead! I cannot believe if you're Tampa Bay, you leave Jordan Reed alone with man-to-man coverage outside. Beat you again on another slant. They the lead with 24 seconds to go! You like that? You like that? I love Fired Up Kirk, and so does our guest, wide receiver for the Washington Redskins. In his eighth year in the NFL, in 2013, he broke the Redskins' all-time franchise record for receptions in a single season with 113 catches. We welcome to the desk, Pierre Garçon. You were feeling that after that comeback win, seeing your quarterback go nuts. I like it. I like it yeah. a lot. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here with us. We appreciate it. I like your right. representing Haiti there. Thank and, you. And making time it. on your bye week. But let's, let's just get right into it, okay? <laughs> yes. How are your Redskins going to finish? Uh, you know, right now we're heading in the right direction. We're happy about, you know, the last two two-minute drives that we had in mm -hmm. this season, but um, we have to play 60 minutes. But we're we're on the right um, on the right path to you know to keep keep getting better. <laughs> okay, I'll let the guys get in. Pierre Garcon. Yes, sir. Now you, you you know I like you, bro, <laughs> but you just but, but you just said something that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> What's that? You said y'all are moving in the right direction. Oh yes, oh yes. Y'all haven't won two straight games yet. You know we just uh -uh. gotta we gotta win the divisional games. Um, we're trying to put back to back games, but um, that is something that we're working on. We definitely have to put you know back to back games to 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 keep moving in the right directions. But we got our, our two minute drill down packed. We um, just have to play sixty minutes. Can you please tell me how confident you all are in Kirk? Cousins. I mean, this is Kirk Cousins that we're talking about here. We know your coach believes in him. I want to know when you think about him, do you think hope or do you think expectation? I know. We love Kirk. Work? We love Kirk because um, he's actually done the hard part. You know, when games on the line, he's come through and um, finished the games for us. But, um, you know, we just have, as a team have to help him the first, what, 58 minutes of the game to, to, to not put it all on him on the last two minute drives of every game or you know every you know time we're trying to finish a game out but he's done the hard part finishing games out we just have to play better the first three quarters so pierre help me out here yes sir <laughs> speaking of kirk cousins please explain to me how your head coach jay gruden can be so publicly over the top supportive of kirk cousins while all last year he was so publicly hypercritical of Robert Griffin III. Oh, we got to support who's ever at our quarterback. You know, I don't think it was uh, critical of Robert. It's things that we just need to fix, We things we need to work on. And, you know, you just got to continue to work on those things and make them better. But it's not, you know, publicly criticizing him or going against him. It's just something we got to work on. It all depends on how you look at things and how you take things in. But if the coach say, I need to do something better to the public, you know, I just need to do it better as a player. And that's, I need to fix it and, and do what he wants because he's the coach and he's going to guide us to, to, to where we need to be. How okay, much but Pierre, wouldn't you agree that he was very critical last year of Robert? I'm um, living in D.C. Everybody's critical, especially when you're not winning games. You know, that's how it is. When you're winning games, everybody say you're doing everything amazing. But when you're losing, everything gets um, brought down to the microscope to what you could have done better. But it's part of football. You know, at the end of the day, it's about winning games. If you win games, everything else will take care of itself. I'm wondering how much support does RG3 have? And I know he's not playing. Um, Kirk Cousins is your quarterback. But a lot of people look at it and the lack of support that he has received isn't just from Redskin faithful. It appears to be emanating at least to some degree from that locker room. How legitimate is that? Because it's been talked about in D.C. and beyond the nation's capital as well about teammates not supporting RG3. Talk to me about that. I wouldn't agree on that at all because in the locker room there's always People that, there's always players that go through things. You always support your guys. There's one moment you're going to be up, one moment you're going to be down. You know, we're all trying to accomplish the same goal. Robert knows I support him. I support anybody that plays quarterback who's trying to get us the ball to accomplish the same goal as to, to get the ball into the end zone and score touchdowns and get victories. We support whoever is on the field because at any moment, anybody can be put in that position. So it's not anything against Robert. We support 
all our players on our team because everybody's on the team for one goal is to win no matter if you're you know the last man to get picked on um on the team or the first guy on the team we're all after one goal and everybody's equal once we're out there on the field on sundays and i just want to make sure to, to, to double check this because i asked you earlier i'm gonna give you a second chance <laughs> i use the word hope and I use the word expectation, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering what is it that y'all feel when it comes to Kirk Cousins behind center? Are you telling me that y'all are that confident in Kirk Cousins that you believe this guy is the quarterback to take y'all to the promised land? Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah, we're expecting Kirk to keep getting better. You know, like I said, he's done the hard part by getting us through games in the two-minute drills. We're definitely expecting us now to do better in the first three quarters of the game. We're just expecting them to keep getting better and better. And that's what happens when you have experience. Kirk is, is, is experienced now. He has a little bit more games under his belt, and he's learning every day and trying to continue to get better every day. And we expect him to continue to get Does better. Does that mean you're expecting him to win? Oh, of course. Of course. You know, when you go out there, you, <laughs> you play to win. You're not going out there just to run the clock. You're expected to win. You're expected to do well. And as a professional, that's what you expect for yourself and expect for, from your teammates because that's why we're in this league. All right. So, so Pierre. Yes, sir. If Kirk Cousins is going to actually get better and better, how much do you believe that Robert deserves a shot starting over with another team? Would you like to see that happen for his sake? Um, it's hard to say if you want him to start over with another team. Robert, you know, was a quarterback um, of the Redskins. You know, he came into D.C. Sometimes, you know, things don't work out well, but, you know, he, Robert is still working hard after practice, during practice, and still trying to be prepared for whenever his number is called. You never know what's going to happen, but he's still working hard to be prepared for if anything happens that he's, he's available to, you know, keep the, keep the ball rolling and keep us going in the right direction. I know you're not the head coach, but I'm going to ask you this question anyway. How do you feel? Mm -hmm. about the fact that y'all have got like the 21st ranked rushing attack. I think the combination of Alfred Morris with Matt Jones can be pretty formidable. I think that can make things considerably easier for Kirk Cousins, which could ultimately assist with him being even more effective. I don't mean to knock Kirk because he has completed 68% of his passes and he deserves a lot of credit for that in all honesty. But I'm wondering, do you guys feel like you can and should run the football a little bit more than you've been doing and that your rushing attack should be a little bit better? I don't know. We've been known to rush, run the ball, rush the ball with Alfred and Matt Jones. Those guys do a very good job. But after a while, defenses are just bringing in eight and nine guys in the box. And you know, no matter what play, game plan you do for a rushing attack, you know, it's one man with the ball and nine guys going after him. It's going to be hard to break all those tackles. We just have to, you know, be more of a threat in the passing game for them to respect our passing game and take guys out of the box so we can continue to get Alfred and um, Matt to, to get those holes um, against those defenses. Well, let me finish. I got another one. Yes, sir. How, sa how satisfied? <laughs> I'm sorry. I was, just, I was giving Skip a chance to chime in there, but I, I, I appreciate the pause. So it, it allows me to answer, ask this question. Mm -hmm. How satisfied are you with the number of touches that you're getting? I think you got about 37 receptions on this year. Could you be getting the football more, Pierre uh, Garçon? Well, you know, as a player, as a receiver, you never get enough balls. But um, it's about the team. It's not about myself. And what you know um what i want personally it's about wow. you know, winning games i'm happy that we're winning games you know we i think we won more games than we won last year or close to winning more games than we won last year so we're moving in the right direction but when i do get an opportunity to get the ball you know i, I well, make sure everybody knows i'm giving it my all and getting as most yards as possible as i can skip, I skip go ball. ahead because pierre garcon boy he listen man he sounds like i mean he's in the nation's capital for a reason i mean your answers are beautiful <laughs> you sound like a politician i gotta give it to you i gotta give it to you i gotta give it to you i mean you're in the, you're in the right place the Nation's capital. You run it for office. I mean, Skip, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Go ahead, Skip. Yeah. Uh, Pierre is evasive and hard to tackle. We know that. <laughs> yeah. We've watched him a lot. Now we see hey, it right I ain't here, mad right? at you. I'm not mad at you. Okay. I'm not mad at you at all. All right. Let's, let's try one other direction here. <laughs> other than your Redskins. Other than your Redskins, who is the best team in the NFC East? Um, well, right now, like today, was. was um, right now, say, is Ooh. without the Redskins or <laughs> with the Redskins? You say without the Redskins. No Redskins. Um, no, just who else? There are three other choices, obviously. The Eagles are playing well. They beat the Giants. The Giants beat us. The Cowboys are hurting without Romo and Dez. So right now, I guess you'd say uh, it's a toss-up between. Uh, I can help you if you need it. <laughs> the Eagles um, beat the Giants last. Um, I'll say the the Eagles, oh. and we beat the Eagles. Oh. So that put oh. a <laughs> the Eagles. So, Wait, 
But the Giants. We, we actually us. have an answer. <laughs> we have an answer. I said the Eagles. We have the Eagles. I said the Eagles. The Eagles are better than the Giants and the Cowboys. Oh. Wow. What do you right. think about that, Stephen A? <laughs> well, I don't have a I don't have a problem with that position because the reason why he picked the Eagles is because they beat the Eagles. So because they beat the Eagles, if you call the Eagles the best team in the NFC East besides the Redskins, mm. then you're acknowledging that the Redskins <laughs> is who you believe to be the best team in the division because you beat who you call the best team in the on. East. I get all of that. I get all that. It's not that puzzling, Skip Bayless. <laughs> Stay with us. Stay with us. Here's the deal, Pierre. Yeah. I, I mean, I, you know, I don't know if guys have ever asked this question, but damn it, I'm going to ask it. How happy are you, if at all, that a Romo, a Des Bryant, I'm certainly not accusing you or any other player of wishing injury mm -hmm. upon another player. Please don't get me wrong. The question is, is, is basically a fun-filled question. I'm just wondering, when they're out, do you have any sympathy or any empathy for them because they're losing without two of their horses? Or do you sit there and say, that's their problem. I, I, I'm, I'm totally cool with it because it helps us. What's the attitude of the opposition in that regard? Like you say, you never want uh, another player in the NFL to get hurt or play injured or, you know, to hurt their career. But Romo and um, Dez being out, you know, we have injuries too. But, you know, we're, we're not... Um, happy that they're injured, but we're okay with them losing games and, um, you know, making it a little bit easier on us to to win the division, to win the, to make a run at the playoff and uh, keep moving forward. But we have injuries, too, that we're dealing with. Everybody has injuries, but it's part of the game. We, it's just how you respond to it and how your team uh, move forward with it. So, Pierre, I got, I got one last question for you. I, I read these stats early this morning, and they startled me. They astonished me. Do you realize within your division, mm -hmm. the Eagles lead the NFL in takeaways with 19? Mm -hmm. Do you realize the Giants lead the NFL in turnover ratio at plus 10? And my Dallas Cowboys are at the very bottom of the NFL in turnover ratio, minus 9. What does that tell you? Put that in some perspective for me. You said the Eagles lead the league in takeaways? In takeaways, yeah, and the Giants lead in turnover ratio. They're a plus 10, and my Cowboys are dead last in the whole NFL, minus 9. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I guess the Cowboys got to get some more takeaways. <laughs> no, that's correct. Thank you very much. They haven't had one for four games. And you know, Four games, my Cowboys it, haven't. I'm sure if the offense helped them a little bit, the defense could be more aggressive. <laughs> Not sure how else you can really look at it. You just need some takeaways on defense. All right. You're out of the crossfires <laughs> for now. You did a good job with that. Um, no diva receiver here, but thank you for catching that game winner against the Eagles. I, pre I appreciate that. You'll be back with us in just a bit mm -hmm. in the show. Okay, up next, we head to the association. Back at the scene of the crime, Thabo Sevalusha explains why he's suing the city of New York. The guys will react after the break.